Okay, so hidden toxin number four. It's found in one of the most important rooms in your home. Do you know which room that might be? What? Bedroom, yes, smart, okay. So it's chemicals in conventional mattresses. <laughs> okay, um, most mattresses have polyurethane foam, styrofoam, polyester, and these are derived from crude oil and natural gas. You're sleeping on gasoline. Now, here's the thing. They're very flammable. So what, so what does the, man, the manufacturers have to do is they put in flame retardants because you light a match on one of these mattresses, they go up. So they're not compliant to, to government safety standards. So they have to pour in toxic flame retardants, which you don't want either. Uh, added to, yeah, so they the add flame retardants, which are called PBDEs, and plus they put in some stain-resistant chemicals and water chemicals, and these are known carcinogens. So, you know, it's just, you know, and you think about kids going off to college and starting a new life and, you know, getting this mattress, and it's just, it's heartbreaking because they're exposing themselves to unnecessary toxins. A lot of other ingredients in these mattresses, boric acid, antimony, formaldehyde. Yikes, that's in, um, you know, embalming fluid. And um, DECA, it's called. Um, there's a lot of chemicals in there. And so think about it, you know, this is the one place where breathing this in eight hours a night, face contact with the mattress. It can be uh, as much as one and a half pounds of these chemicals on the surface of a queen mattress. And uh, this surprised me, a 2000 uh, New Zealand medical study attributed crib deaths to the off-gassing of chemicals in baby mattresses. Right? It's serious. <laughs> So there's something called the Global Organic Textile Standard, GOTS, and it does not approve of polyurethane foam, flame retardant chemicals, formaldehyde, pesticide, GMOs, glues, adhesives, vinyl, and phthalates. So they say no to all these chemicals in, in the mattresses. And so there are some great mattress companies out there that follow the GOTS uh, um, guidelines. Um, so um, you want to sleep on a mattress made from materials containing no synthetic chemicals or fire retardants. If you can't afford a new mattress, get yourself a mattress topper. So, you know, it's just a thing that you place on top of the mattress which can kind of protect you. Um, I like natural latex foam, wool, and organic cotton as a, as a combination. And then think about the bed. Um, buy a wooden bed rather than one with particle board or fiber board. That can give off toxic fumes. Um, you know, I've been in homes where, you know, you open up the cabinets and there's fiber board. It just, there's a smell and it doesn't go away. You can't, like, put essential oils in there and expect it to just go away. It's there. So um, you want to just try to find natural wood if you can. Um, my favorite mattress company is Naturepedic. They follow the GOTS principle. And I know that when I first started sleeping on a mattress like this, um, the first thing I noticed was deeper sleep. And the second thing I noticed, I woke up refreshed. And the third thing I noticed was I was remembering my dreams. That was like, I, I just thought, wow, that's really amazing. Like, how did that happen? Um, I like that. I just, I, I do. And it's really comfy. So um, this company is great. They, it's all handmade. They have Amish workers. And every piece of the mattress is, is touched by human hands. It's, it's very, it's beautiful. So um, I can, you can also find more about this on my website. Okay. So hidden plastic, hidden uh, toxin number five are plastics. So that plastics are huge, you know, we're, they're everywhere. And um, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, what, what to pay attention to the most. And so this is um, 
The study found that BPA-free plastics, including styrofoam, releases estrogenic chemicals. This is in, co in coffee cups. Um, this was just the other day, um, February 5th, a Newsweek said that the chemical in plastic that wreaks havoc on hormones may be impossible to avoid. And this is about um, BPA, bisphenol A. So <clears throat> here's the thing you need to know about BPA. If you see a sign that says BPA free, it doesn't mean it's safe. I'm sorry to say, you know, everyone's looking for BPA-free water bottles, BPA-free baby stuff. They are substituting something called BPS for BPA. And, you know, the manufacturers say, well, consumers are smart. They don't want BPA. So we're going to tell them, okay, we're going to switch it out. We're not using BPA so you can feel safe. But I got to tell you, it's not, it, it's like the toxic shell game going on. <laughs> They're substituting. So the best thing to do is to buy glass or metal, and that's what you use, and try to avoid your plastics. Um, they leach, they, um, exposure to UV light via sunlight or baby bottle UV sterilizers, they found that more than three quarters of the containers tested released synthetic estrogen. So, you know, if you think about, um, a large incidence of breast cancer or estrogen dominant. Um, children, um, young girls are getting their periods much earlier in life. You know, could it be from exposure to plastics? Maybe. Why, why risk it when you can just easily make a switch? So these were, um, you know, these <laughs> Advent, Born Free, uh, the camelback, these were also, um, they showed that hormonal uh, altering chemicals were, were released after UV exposure in these. And um, these water bottles as well, they all leached um, estrogen chemicals. Nalgene, it's, it's disturbing, but it's true. And so Rubbermaid food storage containers as well. So, so here's some safe alternatives, glass. Um, these, they ha these have these sleeves, these uh, silicone sleeves. You know, it's not touching the food or the water, so it's safe. And here's some safe alternatives. You know, I love going to the container store and buying glass. Um, you know, do it slowly over time. I eventually have gotten rid of all my Tupperware and all my plastics. And, you know, I just love having the glass in my kitchen and I, I'm not, a troubled by the, if the cap has plastic on it, as long as it's not touching your food. And then, you know, there's like certain foods that um, will tend to uh, leach more of the plastic. So anything that's acidic, like um, orange juice or tomato sauce, you know, in plastic, uh, not a good idea. There's also um, canned foods that has this plastic BPA liner. Um, so look for like tomato sauce in glass jars, for example, rather than cans. Some solutions. Uh, avoid microwaving in plastic. Uh, minimize the use of fragrances, home cleaners, and, uh, and, and plastics. Let's see. Oh, dust. So yeah, just in general, um, dust contains a lot of harmful chemicals. So the dust that comes from inside our couches that have the flame retardants and the mattresses. Um, so you want a damp mop and, and damp dust frequently. Um, because w especially when you have children around, they're crawling on the floor, they're getting the dust on their hands and then they're eating it. Um, use a HEPA vacuum cleaner and uh, open the windows for good ventilation because sometimes the air inside our homes can be more toxic than the air outside, even if you're living in New York City or LA. Stay informed. Uh, there's a website from the uh, Center for Environmental Health, and they have an updated list on which products are free of flame retardant chemicals and which manufacturers have removed them. So it's ceh.org. Uh, I love these, these guys. And then just add house plants. Um, 
this will get rid of formaldehyde. A lot of, uh, uh, this was done, uh, NASA did a study um, and found these, these, these particular house plants, you know, really worked well in clearing the air. So um, aside, you know, it looks great. It, it, it's it's it going to help the air quality in your home. And get yourself a good uh, doormat. You know, wipe your feet when you come in. It's such a simple thing. If you think about, um, uh, the other thing is I have everyone take their shoes off in my house. I don't care, you know, people don't like it, but if I provide some socks or whatever. Here's the thing. Um, you're walking around in the streets, you're picking up, you know, petroleum, dog poop, like who knows what else, and you're just schlepping it into your, into your home on the rugs and in your bedroom. It's like, it's not a good thing. Um, you just, it's so easy to take your shoes off when, you know, the Japanese do it, and um, it's just a tradition, and I think we should make a tradition of it here as well. Okay, so <laughs> you feeling like this? <laughs> you feeling? <laughs> Sometimes when I give uh, these talks, you know, people get a little overwhelmed. So um, I just want to tell you that w I've created a, a home study course, which uh, a four-week program called HealthyHomeCourse.com, and I take you through each room in the house. I've got two weeks in the kitchen, and then um, a week on um, your personal care products and makeup. And then the last week is on household cleaners and carpeting and, and all that. Um, so give you sort of uh, an easy bite-sized way to, to, to deal with this. And it's kind of condensed from, my, from, what was in, from, from what's in my book. Sometimes people don't like to read, so you know, this is a, a video course. And um, OK, so let, I want to hear from you. What, so, What's, what's the one change that you're going to make? Oh, wait, okay, we're going to take questions, but I, I just want to know what, uh, what's some changes? Okay, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, I, I moved into an apartment, and I let the man in to put my internet in, and he was digging in the corner, right next to my bed. And he was placing all this stuff right next to my bed. And it was a tight corner. Okay. So I, I, I called and I said to PSCG, can they move this? Oh no, it's $150 to do it, to oh. move it. And uh, it, it intuitively bothered me, okay? And so I was shutting it down at night. And then my friend came here yesterday and she said, you've got to do more than that. So uh, I think the information that you're giving is incredibly vital, and I truly appreciate it. And it is so insidious. That's what I, I've gotten from this. It's like you, you do all these other things, eat organic food, and, and then your mattress leaks <laughs> formaldehyde. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, well, okay, so intuitively you're right. You do want to move that if you can, and if you can't, then definitely turn it off at night. Because distance matters. Um, distance matters. These Wi-Fi routers give off a tremendous field. They have uh, companies that have something called a Faraday cage that you can, you can put around. They're not that expensive, and you could put it around your, your router, and that will help. Um, the other, part of my question, the other part of my question was, is there anything we can wear on our heads that protect our brains? You know, they have fabrics and, and clothing. Um, I think it's called the EMF Safety Store. Um, you can actually buy a, um, a canopy for your bed that goes over your bed and will protect you while you're sleeping. So that's a possibility, but I wouldn't say, you know, if you put it on your ha head, you're still going to be getting it in your body. You'd have to walk around in a space suit, and that's not going to be practical. Yes? Um, I live in an apartment building, uh, so there's about 40 apartments there on, on total on three floors, and I'm probably the only person who does not have Wi-Fi in their apartment, and uh, not only, when, when they bought a television for the lounge, 
they also got like Netflix and stuff and then without telling us, they also made it building wide Wi-Fi as well as there's Wi-Fi in pretty much everyone's apartment. And, yeah. and they said that, that the cable company told them we can't shut it at night because it hurts the equipment. Oh, that's not true. It doesn't hurt the equipment. Okay, no. or it makes the equipment not last as long. How do I refute that? <laughs> right. No, that's true. Besides just saying, oh, Beth Greer told me that. that. <laughs> and you're not the only, and I know right. it too, because I've, you know, lived other places and turned right. it off. And I mean, you might be able to get a note from your doctor. Sometimes if they see an MD after a name, you know, they'll say, okay, you no, know, we'll make an exception for you. I, but they, no, they, they, don't, they don't care about a doctor's note in terms of, they want visitors to have, build, to have Wi-Fi over the, the, but, but, but also about to have the residents turn it off at night. Where, where is their literature? Where is there something written that, a, that, that they can turn it off at night, that, that it won't hurt the equipment? Okay, so um, Deborah Davis is going to be speaking today about um, cell phones and radiation, and she's going to have a lot of information about that. Um, there are websites out there, um, and I'm, if you email me, um, I can get get to the name. I don't remember off the top of my head, but there's a lot of information about about it out there that that I can send you. Okay. Yes. I've always felt that way about the microwave. I got the first microwave back when it first came out. My parents owned a retail drugstore, and it was given to them for free. And I was a kid, and I said, Mom, this is dangerous. We shouldn't use it. I just, it was a big monstrosity. I'm, I'm having a home built for me. It's not a home. It's a condo. Okay. And from what, if I'm correct in hearing information, if they put the microwave in and I don't use it, it's still giving off... No, when okay. you turn it on. So as long... Okay, yes. so then I can get the microwave, no yes. problem. No problem. Because that will be... A problem. It's a new construction, right. and is yeah. they're doing it the way they want to do no, it. No, it's just when you turn it on, it, it will leak. All right. It's I, it's not going to be leaking just sitting I, there. I just want to share with you. There's also something called Pulsar. I've been using them for years. Doctor Yao uh, used to do classes uh, back in the day. Um, they're pulsars. Uh, they have pulsar pendulums, pulsars to wear on your body, pulsars to put all of your house on the microwave. Mm -hmm. So there is another company. It's Pu. P-U-L-S-O-R, and they have many people distributing them, and they have stuff to help with your Wi-Fi boxes as well. Right, there's a lot of uh, different materials and different products and pendants and all that. You know, I do what I, I if it's not super expensive, I'll try it, you know, um, but I, I kind of like to, to find things that have been researched and shown scientifically that they're bl actually blocking, like some of these fabrics do, or you know, some of the stuff. There's crystals you can get and all that stuff. Well, a mattress cover will help. Definitely help. It'd be better to get a, be a, a, a new mattress. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Great. Yes. He has a question. Well, thank you very, very much. It was very informative. One of the Welcome. things that shocked me and that I'm going to change is uh, storage of plastic containers versus glass. And what I wanted to ask, I, I knew intuit intuitively never to heat food up in plastic or put hot food in plastic, but what about cold food? Just as dangerous? Okay, so cold, storing cold food in plastic, if it's yes. not acidic food. So again, uh, tomato sauce, um, orange juice, citrus, those kinds of things will tend to leach the chemicals, even if it's cold. Probably better off just junking the whole thing, which is probably what I'm going to yeah. do when I get home. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Great. Okay, we have a question here. Oh. Um, I wanted you to talk a little bit about the Himalayan salt lamps. I had gotten some for our bedrooms just to kind of counteract um, a lot of the electronics and maybe other toxins and stuff. Right. What do you think? I have, a f I have a few of them at home, the Himalayan salt lamps. Um, w the reason I know it worked for me, um, w not so much around EMFs, but I have a friend who has cats, and I'm very allergic to cats. And um, so she 
she brought out her lamp. This was years ago, and my, my, this, I stopped sneezing immediately, and I thought, okay, th this works. Okay, I'm getting some. So, I mean, it's anecdotal, but it, I know that it, you know, had an effect, and it, it supposedly gives off um, negative ions, and yes, and they're beautiful, and they're not expensive, so why not? Yeah. Yeah. Himalayan salt lamp. Okay, the woman right here. Thank you. Um, a, a retreat that I know of uses uh, sleep number beds, which uh, can be as soft or as hard as you like. You can, and it's also wonderful because it's level. It doesn't go down in the ends. But is that made of something that is okay or not? No. Probably not. Because I sleep so great on that. You do, but okay. No, but it's not made of. You can keep your sleep number bed if you get a t maybe a topper for it. And you, you'll find that you'll sleep even better. Yeah. Yes. I had a question on the uh, microwaves. When uh, do you have a, a reader or uh, some tool that after you cook the food, does the radiation still stay in it? Besides, no. No. Okay. No. It's just when the when the machine is on, then it, then that's Excellent. when it registers. Thank you so much, Beth. Uh, oh. Very informative. So the thing that I cued into most was the, the sleep and because I love my memory foam mattress <laughs> <laughs> but obviously it's not healthy for me so I'll change to a natural latex natural la latex wool cotton yeah there's awesome. a yeah thank you sure yeah I mean comfort is one thing and that's really important but also you have to pay attention to the fact that it's you're getting you're being exposed to unnecessary chemicals so, I w yes, back there. The meters that you use, are, are the, is it a common yeah, instrument? Yeah, the, the Gauss use? meter is for the, um, like it'll measure like a clock radio um, or um, Microwave. the microwaves, oh. and they're not expensive. Uh, the RF meters that I have measure um, cell tower. Um, cell towers for the RF. For the RF and, and for and the, the uh, Stitzer, compute. the Stitzer, the Stitzer measures the dirty electricity in the walls, That's it. and that, that you plug it into each outlet to see. Okay, and the other thing was that is there any type of a wall? You know, because some of these homes are connected. Like if you live in a condo or something, and if your neighbor's got all his electronics on that wall that you're sleeping in, I can imagine it must really increase the amount of electric magnetic field is coming into you. That's right. Unless the wall, does the wall block it enough? No. Not a lot, no. So can you put some kind of, is aluminum good? You know, something to put there? There, well there's, um, you can get a, a thin sheet of um, like a, a metal that, um, a, a metal uh, plate that you can put up. I know that that blocks the smart meters. Mm. Uh, is there any specific thing like aluminum? Copper. Copper, it needs to be copper. That would block a field. Yeah, I mean, if you're friendly with your neighbors, if you could ask them to move their, you know, tell me not sleeping well, could, would you mind moving your router to the other wall? I mean, that's, because yeah. again, the fields drop off. Yes. Oh, wait. Um, so My question is, um, uh, at night when you recharge your iPhone, uh, three feet away from the bed, is that good enough or should the iPhone be out of the room completely? Okay, when it's charging, it's emitting fields. So ideally, you charge it, keep your phone three feet away, but not uncharged, and you could maybe charge it in the morning. But anytime anything's plugged in, you're getting higher fields. Does that make sense? So can you charge it before you go to bed and then unplug it? And yeah, and put it on airplane mode. Yes. One more question here? Okay. Oh, whoever. Follow-up question to that woman's question. What if the phone device is off and you're charging it? Like you it's, shut the device off, it's I still understand. emitting? It's still g giving a field. Okay. Anytime that anything's I'm... plugged in, it is giving a field. Not as high as if the phone is on. 
But if you want to keep it calm, then don't plug it in. Okay, that's a mistake I'm making. Okay. I've seen a hundred of these uh, blockers for your cell phone. Are you aware of any that work? I use, um, what is it called? Um, uh, what is the name of it? Um, P-O-N-G oh, research. So it's just very hard to get off once it's on. <laughs> I haven't been able to get the, the thing off again, but it, yeah, from the research that I've seen, that, that seems to be a good one. Yes. And I'm just curious, I, I want to know what change you're going to make. So you're, you're st someone stopping, oh, you're n not microwaving. I, I, I'm not going to throw it out, but I will stop using it. Uh, that reminds me. Okay, good. What about you, Michelle? Oh, excellent. Okay, good. So they're going to they're going to review their kitchen labels. That's really good. And film yourself doing it. Yeah. And post it on YouTube or something. Good. Yes. No, I just wanted again just one last thing. The uh the Faraday cage, you, you sort of said something about that, but yes. no information. What was the Faraday cage? What is that? So it 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 block it'll block the um the field coming off of the router. You can buy, uh, they're made specifically for the, um, for the routers and, and it kind of, it's a little cage that you stick it in and, and it cuts down the field dramatically. And if you email me and uh, I'll, I'll send you information about it. Yes. I, I have it plugged into the wall, so I will not keep it plugged in. I will take Good. it out unless I'm using it. Good. And I will go through all the food that I have and read the labels. Good. Excellent. Very good. Starters to all this. Great. You, is this information on your web, web website too? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Question: The Vitamix. It's yes. plastic. They supposedly say it's safe. Do you I have know. any information about this? I use my Vitamix every morning. <laughs> I mean, you have to live. Live, that's what I say. Otherwise you have to live. Crazy. Like, you drive everyone around you. Crazy. Right, they don't make it with a glass container, so they, they used to, okay. But uh, that's the thing, I just sort of put it into this hierarchy of harm, and I think if you eat organic, non-processed, no GMOs, no food dyes, it, and p natural products on your skin, you're so far ahead of, of most people. So if you're, can't get neurotic. No, the stress will kill you. <laughs> right. Beth. Well, she says she's using her Vitamix. It's plastic. The, yeah. No, 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 Vitamix. Right, it's, it's a high powered um, blender and it does, yeah. Yes. I have two uh, questions. I have uh, all over my house, I have uh, my phone, my computer, I have those little discs on them, and I have things plugged into all, almost all, some of my outlets, one in each room that is supposed to help the EMFs. I hope they do. And um, I have my mattresses all, and my pillow pillows all encased in those zipped things that are supposed to help the dust mites. Does that uh -huh. help this, or should I also get a uh, topper? Better well. to get a topper. It does help with dust mites, but it doesn't help with the uh, the, the dust coming off of the um, the chemicals that it are in there. Oh, the, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. I, the one I'm sorry. The one makeup I use is an eyebrow pencil, and every day I feel weird that I'm putting something over where my part of my brain is. Oh. Is there a brand that you recommend? Yeah, any brands that are like at Whole Foods, they make, you know, uh, Dr. Hauschka or um, I have a whole list of them in my book. Um, Jane Iredale makes good, some good, uh, Gabriel, uh, Zuzu. There's a lot of good makeup brands out there right now. So yeah, switch to a, sw switch to a natural one, that'd be good. He has a question here.
I come from Australia. Is there such a thing as a safe hair, hair dye? Well, there is, yeah, there are companies that make it. There's non-ammonia products, um, certain salons. You have to just look for them. And in Manhattan, I'm sure you can find. Um, and then there's, there's some natural henna products that you can find at, uh, at Whole Foods. Yeah. What else? What other changes that you guys are going to make? What about you? We're going <laughs> to single you out. You're the youngest one here. What, what are you? <laughs> um, I can use some less my phone, and then I can um, search for more naturally um, things in my home or something else. Good. OK. That'd be great. Great. Anyone else have any questions or any thoughts about, um, go ahead, yes. I'm going to get a mattress topper. Okay, excellent. And I'm going, I have the, uh, hand, the um, wireless phone next to my bed. Ah. It's not, it's not the main unit. It's, do I have to move that? I would move it, yeah. yeah. Because it's communicating with the main unit. So it's, it's affecting you. How about if I took the phone off the, the stand during the night and just left the phone there. Well, you still have the base that this, the... I'll move the base. Okay. Just move it out of your bedroom. Can oh. you do that? Yeah. Okay. But the, that's not the main unit. I understand, but the main unit is communicating right. with the... With base. The but how about the phone? The phone will still be active because it's charged. Right. So I could leave that near my bed. I wouldn't need, does it have to be right next to your bed? I mean, I want you to have like a really quiet sleep sanctuary. So how many times are you getting calls in the middle of the night? I always worry about an emergency. I understand. You so know, you, can, needs... you can keep it uh, away from your head. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right.